Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic is very simple and I hope uh, after we finish you guys you will download the video and share it with your friends. Jesus in Islam. We hear Muslims speaking always about Jesus and they claim that Jesus is a prophet in Islam and he is a Muslim. First of all, the name Jesus never exists, period, in Islam. And when I'm talking about Jesus here, I'm not talking about the Latin name. I'm talking about the name, not only the Latin, the Latin does not exist, the Hebrew does not exist, even the Arabic name of Jesus does not exist. I am an Arab, and the name of Jesus in the Bible is Yeshua. We never, never, ever call Jesus Isa, not a single Christian in history. You will not find one historian Christian book ever wrote Isa so when the Muslims they translate for you and they say who was Jesus you should know that this is a fabrication and Jesus never mentioned never by name in their books not in the hadith not in the Quran not anywhere so Muhammad he come with a name and he called him Isa who is Isa we do not know and then the Muslims they try to present to us this one uh, Isa and they claim that Isa is a prophet here when, always when you see Muslim say Jesus replaced with Isa Isa lived 2,000 years ago in the ancient Palestine the Muslim they reject to say that this is Israel even the Quran acknowledge it as the land of the Jews when the Roman Empire was in uh, at, uh, at uh, Zenith he was not conceived normally, but was miraculously implanted implanted in the womb of young women named Mary by the command of God. In this sense, Jesus was the word of God. Here you notice that Islam as a cult is taking, you know, taking some from Christianity and try to apply it, but it's mixing it with other belief about the one who they call him Isa. So Isa is the word of God. Isa, which supposedly is Jesus. He is the word of God. Is Muhammad the word of God? No. Is Abraham the word of God? No. Is Adam the word of God? No. Why, why Isa is the word of God? They cannot explain. Obviously, Muhammad was under the influence of a Christian who they were alive, arrive, uh, actually, Muhammad did not know really, really Christians. He knew mostly a cult. Christians like Jehovah's Witnesses so there is the influence of Christianity in Muhammad somehow and he took from them some belief and here we go Jesus is the Word of God which is in total agreement with the Bible in the beginning it was the Word, and the Word was with God and the Word is the God or was the God and then the Word became a man that's exactly what the what the Muslims now he's saying but in the same time Islam deny the name of Jesus Deny the name of Emmanuel, den deny the the uh, 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 everything about Jesus except that he's just a prophet. Same time, his name is wrong, his inheritance is wrong, his the name of the family which supposedly he is born from is wrong. As an example, Mary, the the plus, uh, was a righteous woman who was uh, her mother had detected her uh, her to God service even before she was born as a child she lived etc so the muslim they tried to present to you that we muslims we respect mary but mary in the quran is not mary the mother of jesus how we can find out mary in the quran she is the sister of moses muslims they try to say that mary because because the quran says mary is the sister of aaron as we see here and we will show you the verse <coughs> Chapter 19, verse number 28. The Quran called Mary, O sister of Aaron. The Muslims, in many articles, they try to fabricate and try to defend. And they say, well, the Quran called it the sister of Aaron, not because she is his sister, but because she is from the same family. But this is absolutely false. Because Mary, she is not from the same tribe of Moses. She is not a granddaughter of Moses. 
here you will notice this is the Muslim website they are trying to defend the the, the fabrication of the Quran was Mary the sister of Aaron so the whole article here is to refute me in, in, in what I'm going to say why the Quran says Mary is a sister of Aaron they say to you that she is a she is a sister in matter of a relationship like a granddaughter uh, or uh, somebody uh, uh, from the same family or the same tribe but Mary she was not she was none of those she is not from the same family of Musa's and she is not from the tribe of Musa's and all of this is a fabrication and look what the Muslims believe just to make it more simple the same article in front of us saying that Mary in Islam she have a father his name is Umran it's clear from the verses that Umran the father of Mary and they say is not the father of Moses who was named Umran as well how it's clear in the verse that they are not it doesn't say anything of that or oh, sister of of Aaron means according to the Ibn Kathir that she was like uh, Arun regarding her uh, positions in the, in the worship of Allah. That's false. You see how they fabricate. Where it says in the verse, where from the verse it says that Mary she is not really obviously the sister of uh, of Aaron. Literally, the verse saying that clearly. We go to back to the verse. They said it doesn't say that. It says that, oh sister of Aaron, who is Aaron? Aaron is the brother of Moses. Moses and Aaron. They have father, his name is Om Omran. Okay, and who is Omran? Omran is the same father of Moses, as you see. So, Muhammad, he don't know who is Jesus, a person who came 600 years after Jesus. He never caught his name, he never mentioned his name, which is very weird. He think that he is the son of Mary, and Mary, she is the same Maryam, Maryam is the same sister of Aaron and Moses, and as you see, uh, uh, it's not an, uh, it's not a mistake that both of them they have the same father name. And here we have another problem. You see, the Muslims in this article are trying to defend, but they get themselves busted. When you admit that Mary, her father is Omran, and Moses, his name father is Omran, then you have to come and tell me how in the world the father of Mary became Omran, because the Bible never says such a name. So how this name is exist? How the name of Mary father changed to be Omran, which is the same of the father of Moses. And by the way, in the Old Testament, the father of Omran, uh, the father of Moses, his name is not Omran, it's Amram. And there's a huge difference between Amram and Omran. So Muhammad, he called the name of the father of Moses wrong. And he misunderstood, for he's a false prophet, and he thought, that Mary she have the same father why because there is a verse in the Old Testament saying that Maryam this is exactly the name as it is in Arabic for Mary the mother of Jesus Maryam she is the sister of Aaron and Moses Muhammad he took that he learned from the Jews that women her name is Maryam she is the sister of Mary of Aaron and Moses so Muhammad he made a verse in the Quran saying "O oh, sister of Aaron and here we have another problem too not only Muhammad he mentioned that Maryam is a sister of Aaron which means the sister of Moses and their father have one name is Omran he make it more 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 uh, 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 crazy when he claimed that the Jews accused Mary that she did something wicked as you see and they are saying to her you know as as if they are saying to her you are a harlot but your mother was not a harlot why because she delivered a baby but that is a stupid because this is a totally different story from the Bible. As you see in the Quran, it never mentioned that Mary, she was engaged to a man. His name is Joseph. And obviously, look like Muhammad. He never heard of this story before. So here you notice that Mary, she never, she, she don't have, she is not engaged. And there's no person, his name is Joseph. No, nowhere it's mentioned, that story. And then here the Jews are accusing her. But if the Jews accuse her, they will stone her. The Jews, if the women she committed adultery and she have no way to escape the, to, to prove it, they will stone her. Muhammad, he come with a miracle. It says that supposedly that the Messiah, he spoke when he was in the cradle. But that will not stop them from 
uh, uh, you know stoning women uh, a woman she she got she got delivered a child without a husband and you say to me uh, the child will talk and then the child he talk and he says I am a prophet and here the story getting more exciting Muhammad claim that the Messiah when he was one minute old he spoke in the cradle and he says I am uh, a prophet and I am the servant of Allah and here he has given me the scriptures and he has appointed me as a prophet and here we notice something very crazy in this uh, verse if Jesus one second old he been given the scriptures why took Muhammad 40 years before Allah he chose him to be a prophet Jesus is one second old he have the scriptures already all the scriptures are given to him Muhammad was receiving scriptures by delivery he is 40 years old and yet he got uh, 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 after that after 40 years of age Allah he did not send him all the, the scriptures in one delivery no he was giving him verse by verse by verse but you see here Isa the one supposed he is Jesus he is born with scriptures and he is a blessed as you see and uh, and here he says peace on me the day I was born and the day I die and the day I shall be raised alive so Jesus will die so here Allah supposedly uh, he or Muhammad Aka Muhammad is telling us the story about Jesus but you notice in the story of Jesus there is no story that's it this is the story of Jesus if you read the whole Quran there's nothing about Jesus that's it from here this is a chapter 19 Jesus to deliver a child the child his name is Jesus he spoke in the cradle and then suddenly the story about Jesus end by Jesus saying there is a prophet will come after me his name is Ahmad and then after that they tried to kill him Allah he took him up to heaven so all the stories in the Quran about Jesus is a few lines where is Jesus in the Quran there's no Jesus there's Isa as we said and there's no story and then Muhammad he came uh but the, the the Jews <coughs> the Jews they try to kill Jesus but Allah he saved Jesus and here the story of Jesus is end after that we hear nothing about Jesus and because of their saying we slew the Messiah Jesus the son of Mary all right Allah messenger oh, for here you notice the stupidity uh, uh, wide and open because the Jews do not believe in Allah anyway and the Jews did not kill Jesus if they believe he is the messenger of God this is not the reason to kill him that's stupid if the Jews they say we kill Jesus the messenger of Allah that's mean they acknowledge Allah as God and they acknowledge Jesus as a prophet and that will be extremely stupid because they will never kill him for being a prophet Imagine is they say how in the world somebody will say I killed the prophet. He's proud about it <laughs> That would be stupid, right? The Jews they don't believe that they are disobeying God when they kill Jesus None of them believe in that So the statement here is a stupid is far away from the truth in the same time They say they slew him not but nor crucified him, but it was appeared so into them if you ask the Muslim, what does that mean? In Arabic, actually, the translation here is not good. They say, Allah made it appear that Jesus was in the cross. And here we have another stupid uh, story. Because if Allah is saying that I made someone look like Jesus in the cross, and then we Christians, we believe that Jesus was in the cross. So who is the liar? The liar is the one who made us see someone look like Jesus in the cross. The Muslims, the Muhammadan believe that Allah he made someone he cloned someone like Jesus he put him in the cross the Jews they thought they killed him but the fact it was appearance of somebody else so here we notice that Allah the deceiver he deceived the Jews and by deceiving the Jews he deceived the Christians too and now the apostle of Jesus they went around the world to preach that Jesus was crucified but the fact according to the Quran he was not crucified but it was the cloning so Allah here supposedly is it trying to tell us I saved Jesus and I deceived you which is very stupid to say and until now the Jews and then Muhammad time the Jews they think they killed Jesus and Muhammad after 600 years he is coming to tell them no 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 you did not kill Jesus 
but Muhammad he have no witnesses for the story he have no proof of what his claim and he was not there and he never met Jesus so how Muhammad he come with this simply this is Muhammad is copying from what some cults believe that because Jesus is so holy and there's no way his father will crucify him so obviously somebody else in the look of Jesus was in the cross for he is the son of God so Muhammad he took from that from them and he applied it in his book and he says that God he made Jesus appear to be in the cross but in fact he was not in the cross so Muhammad is born of out of many cults Muhammad not only he is ignorant about Jesus who is he where he is born what is the language even they speak there's nothing about about uh, Jesus we have as we said Isa never mentioned Jesus and he do not know who is his family he do not know who is his tribe he do not know anything about him and he say crazy stuff about this person who he call him Isa in the same time when Muhammad he come and he says to us that Jesus was not crucified uh, and we ask the Muslims where is Jesus now they say he is up in heaven for God he left him up to heaven Allah took him up as you see in the verse after and Allah took him up into himself Allah was ever mighty wise and here you know you notice that this is cannot be the God of Islam talking because how Allah is the one is talking and then he says but Allah took him up have you ever heard of somebody speaking about himself and then he says like now I am Christian Prince and I say but the Christian Prince took him up that would be stupid I should say but I took him up but because this is a book written by a man who forget always to switch between him and his God so always he speak he says but Allah he took him up now if you ask the Muslims why Jesus cannot be God they will say to you first of all God he died secondly if Jesus is the son of God do you think God the father he will let him be in torture but this is mean based on their logic the same logic they deny the deity of Jesus is the same logic proving Jesus to be God for if you say that Jesus he if he is God he should not die well Jesus until now is 12 2,000 years and he is alive if you say that Jesus should not be tortured because no way his father will let him be killed as you see well his father did not let him get be killed according to your cult so they deny Jesus the same reasons they deny Jesus for to be God is the same reasons to make him God in their cult so Islam is a very stupid cult mixed with many ideas and Muhammad obviously he is very confused and then Muhammad he's tried you know he goes so far and he start describing for us Jesus now remember Jesus uh, 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 like we never we never uh, saw anywhere in the Bible where uh, the disciple of Jesus who witnessed Jesus described how he looked like but Muhammad he is so smart and he knew everything suddenly he come to us with the Jesus which is the red head man read carefully the prophet Jesus the, the prophet said which is Muhammad there is no prophet between me and him and we will get him busted in a second because yes there is between him according to the Quran and between Isa uh, that is Jesus he will descend to the earth and when you see him recognize him a man of a medium height radish fear radish Jesus is a redhead you see the Muslims they say that uh, you Christians worship a white man uh, we never spoke we never, nowhere in the Bible speak about Jesus white or black or Asian no we don't worship a white man and we don't worship men it is you people Muslims who speak about how white is Muhammad how white is hinder arm how white is his belly bum how white between his fingers how white his shin how white his feet and you are talking about actually the, 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 there's a the book the Islamic book says whoever says the Prophet is a black kill him and now Muhammad is bringing us a new Jesus who is a red head Jesus why there is a Jesus red head in the Middle East the Jews are not red head you might see some Jews who lived in Europe because they mix with the European but the real Jews are not redhead. So how Jesus became redhead and why he's redhead? 
if you read the description which Muhammad is coming with he said he have a radish here wearing two light yellow garment look like Jesus never changed his clothes since he went to heaven Muhammad he knew what is the clothes he's wearing and here you need to ask yourself if Muhammad is a prophet of God and Muhammad is sent by God where Muhammad he got this information from the Quran never said so if the Muslims they say that inspiration is coming from God and all information been taught by God shouldn't this be in the Quran if it's not in the Quran why if it is from Allah why it is here so Jesus is a blonde redhead man and he is wearing wearing a yellow garment and there is and then uh, uh, he will he will fight all people and he will be a violent man. He will be Isis. He will be Isis leader He will fight the people all human For the cause of Islam Jesus the Muslim is a terrorist. He's a criminal, but this is totally incomplete uh, uh, This agreement with the Bible Jesus says love your enemy plus those you know who, who curse you So how Jesus is going to come and fight and kill those who don't believe in Islam? Again here, Muhammad is fabricating a new Jesus, which we do not know. And then he will say he will break the cross. Why Jesus will break the cross? I mean, what's the problem with the cross? If Jesus was not crucified in the cross, why he will, why, why he will kill the cross anyway? The cross is a piece, uh, a piece of wood. What the problem? But Muhammad, he have a phobia from the cross. And then he will kill the swine. Here we notice here that something is very stupid. What is the problem between God and a pig? What is the big problem between God and a pig? It's just a stupid animal, a little tiny animal. A guide, God, he will send the Isa in a mission to kill Mr. Pig? Why? Isa is coming from the seven heaven. And he have a target. And his target is to, uh, there's a wanted guy. Very dangerous wanted guy. Let me introduce you to the enemy of Islam. And Jesus, Isa, the Muslim, is coming in a very, very, very dangerous mission. And he will kill this guy. Here you notice that Muhammad, not only mentally ill, this is a very stupid idea. I mean, God is the one who created the pig, yet he is so much, you know, angry from the pig. What the pig did? I mean, this is stupid. Actually, because of pig or pigs, millions of people, they survive every, every year. All surgeries in the world are done by the stitches. They do it by, 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 uh, by a fabric made from the pig meat. Uh, uh, insulin is made from the pig. So pigs are very useful animals. So... This God, he have a mental issue, and he is in phobia with the pigs, with the dogs, and the cross. So Jesus will come, and he will look for the pig, and he says, "Any, hey pig, are you there? I challenge you, come out." And the pig, he will come, and he have something in his mouth, maybe maybe a sword. I think this is the sword in his mouth. And the pig, he will challenge Isa. He will say to you, "If you are a prophet of Allah, come and fight me." And then Isa, he will take his sword. And the pig will, you know, will move his sword in his mouth. And now Isa and the pig, they will be fighting. And we will see like uh, the three musketeer war. And then for sure, after two, three hours, five hours, we do not know how many uh, hours, the pig will be slaughtered and Isa will be victorious. So as you see, all those stories proving that Muhammad is a false prophet and it's extremely stupid. And here, if we go in the Quran, if you remember the hadith here, Muhammad, he said that there is no messenger between me and between Isa, or there's no prophet. And by the way, Muslims, because of their, the stupidity of Muhammad, he said that uh, the Muslim believe that prophet is not, a, is not the same as a messenger. And that is very stupid because a messenger is a prophet and a prophet is a messenger. How we can explain that? Uh, if somebody bring a message from God, the messenger, messenger of who? Messenger of God. So if you are a messenger of God, you are telling people something they do not know. You bring a message from God. 
unless you are telling me that God uh, words is is already known so why he sent any message so the message as long as delivered from God this is mean that you are delivering something that people do not know something new and something coming from God even if it's a warning even if it's about something will happen or something etc so how you can be a messenger but you are not a prophet and how you can be a prophet but not a messenger so here Muhammad he claimed that there is no messenger there is no prophet between me and him which mean Isa but if you go in the Quran in chapter 36 we will find here we read it from interpretation of Ibn Kathir chapter uh, 36 uh, from 13 to 17 you will find here that there is there is a three messengers are sent by the Messiah by Isa and one of them is Paul and the other one and they are messengers they sent to Antioch the city of Antioch uh, uh, here there's a three messengers and those Muhammad he just said there's no messengers between him or there's no prophet between me and and them so when those people they came and they made miracles the Quran says they are messengers messengers of who, of who of Allah supposedly but the fact in the Quran even it says those are the messengers of the Messiah they are sent to the city of Antioch and one of them his name is Bulos Bulos is the name of Paul in Arabic so the Muslims they keep cursing Paul 24 hours a day but in fact their scholars admit that Paul was not only a messenger of God but he is the most powerful one between them Allah is supposed to he sent two messengers and they deny both and then Allah he sent supposedly the third one and the third one is Bulos Paul and what is the city is Antioch as you see and this is very clear that this is under the influence of a Christianity that the messenger of God which is Jesus the Messiah they went to Antioch and this is the first city who became a Christian so Muhammad here is copying Christianity and he claimed that the apostle of Jesus are a messengers of Allah but that will make Jesus God himself if you go here you will see it says those messengers they were the messenger of the Messiah peace be upon him sent to the people of Antioch and here we notice something very strange messengers of the Messiah how the Messiah can make a messenger how Paul can be a messenger of God but yet he is sent by the Messiah can a messenger make you a messenger in order for the Messiah to make you a messenger he have to be God a messenger he cannot hire a messenger he cannot appoint you as a messenger unless he have the authority of God so here you see the confusion of Muhammad now to to wrap up this story Muhammad know nothing about Jesus he do not know his name correctly he do not know he's a son of who he think that his mother she is the daughter of Omran and Musa is the son of Omran and in fact both of them the wrong is, is the name is wrong Mary is not the daughter of Omran and even Musa is not the son of Omran there's no such a name exists Omran is a fabricated name by Muhammad because he could not quote the name correctly and this is goes for many names in the Quran as an example many of you knows that uh, 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 the Quran mentioned the angel Jibreel who is Jibreel Muhammad he could not quote the name correctly so it's not Gabriel it is Jibreel who is Jibreel we do not know Muhammad he could not quote any name correctly as an example once he say Ibrahim once he say Abraham is it Ibrahim or Abraham even the name of Muhammad if we go in the Quran you will see that supposedly Isa he said there's a prophet after me will come his name is Ahmed the Muslim they say well it's the same and no it's not the same name is a name how many names your prophet he have chapter 61 verse number six it says that Isa he said to, to the Jews there is a prophet after me will come and his name is Ahmed so now Muhammad became Ahmed so who is Muhammad and why Jesus did not say there's a prophet will come after me his name is Muhammad what what's the mistake was what what is what's wrong with with the with the name Muhammad 
why suddenly the main name of Muhammad is not exist in the promise of Jesus which is supposed to appear in the Quran and now here any I don't know how many of you notice the failure of this stupid story because if Jesus he promised the Jews that there's a person will come after me and his name is Ahmad what is the point of this prophecy if this prophecy cannot be found to make it simple where we can find the statement of Jesus in the New Testament because this should be appear in the New Testament where we can find in the New Testament any phrase saying that there is a prophet will come after me his name is Ahmad here the Muslim they translate the name the name Ahmad as the praised one which is uh, proven to us that Muhammad is a false prophet because how you call yourself a praised one if Muhammad is the praised one who is the praised two so obviously Muhammad is mentally ill and he think he is God he was trying to replace Jesus he is the praised one but now if we change the translator you will see the name Ahmad appear some translator they translate the name some of them they don't so his name is Ahmad okay now if Allah making a prophecy through Jesus and if Jesus mentioned that it should be in the New Testament but if we could not find it in the New Testament that's mean Allah has a failure because what the point of Allah asking Jesus to tell them the Jews there's a prophet will come after me his name is Ahmad and this prophet will come after him 600 years after and this book will not be preserved for the 600 years coming after you know I don't know if you know you know what I'm saying if Jesus he said that in his time he said it to who supposedly to the Jews children of Israel okay but Muhammad he came 600 years after so this prophecy in order to be valid Allah at least he should keep it preserve it from protect it at least for the coming 600 years so when when the when Ahmad he come uh, he will say to them look my name is there uh, I am Ahmad you know what I mean Do you see you understand guys what the point of this prophecy this is a prophecy about the future and Muhammad prophesying about the past in the same time because he's saying what Jesus said in 600 years ago but where we can find this and why Muhammad did not say to them okay open the Bible in chapter of John as an example and read my name he will go my name he could not so Muhammad obviously he could not find himself anywhere and he want to claim that he is a prophet of God so he used the name of Jesus or Aka Isa just to make himself a prophet but he could not prove that and the funny the Muslims today they are desperately trying to find the name of Muhammad in the Bible so they say to you sometime that he is the the the, the converter suddenly Muhammad became a Holy Spirit or became a spirit uh, sometime they say to you that Muhammad is in the Old Testament but the Quran is so clear that he, this is the name of the one we will find it should be mentioned by Jesus not by anyone and it should be Ahmed so all the fabrication in front of us is v is weird and it is stupid same time uh, if we ask the Muslims about Jesus what do you know about Jesus they say uh, he is a prophet of Allah. They make articles. His his mother, her name is Mary. Okay, Mary gave birth to Jesus. Uh huh. And Mary, she have no husband. Okay, why? Why? You see, there's things Muslims cannot explain because Islam is a counterfeit of a Christianity. When you say to me that Jesus have no father. A Muslim, smart Muslim might say to you, well, Adam don't have a father. That would be a stupid statement, actually, because Adam, how he will have father? Is he born of a woman? Everyone is born of a woman should have a father. Actually, even the Quran confirm and says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُ نَسَبًا وَصِهْرًا And we made... the lineage of a human being by six and marriage. 
chapter 25 verse number 54 the, the every man every man is created from the water of the man it, because all of those are after Adam which means the Quran is saying clearly that every person come after Adam is coming from a sperm okay but Jesus have no father and this is contradiction for the Quran Quran contradicting Quran now why Jesus have no father they have no answer do the Muslims know what the Messiah mean no this is another problem if you ask the Muslim what the Messiah mean everybody give you his own interpretation none of them is accurate but one of the funny ones the funniest ever they say to you the Messiah he was given this name because he have a flat feet I mean can you believe it because this is a counter stupid a counterfeit stupid cult they claim that the word Messiah given to Jesus because he have a flat feet so Jesus cannot join the army because he cannot run properly he have a flat feet so all of Islam has nothing to do with, with, with Jesus the Messiah Islam is a very far away cult from the Messiah now somebody might say to me so why they use the name of Jesus or the word Jesus they use it in translation just to fool you and Muhammad he used the name of the Messiah in his time to fool the Christians in order to poison somebody you you put the poison in his dish not in his toilet seat so people they love the Messiah people they, they love Mary so what we do we say okay we believe in the Messiah we believe in Mary let me show you how Muhammad he was trying desperately to make people believe in him Muhammad in the beginning of his uh, uh, trying to convert people to his cult he made everybody go to heaven look what he said as a start Muhammad he says in the amanu wa ladina hadu wa nasara wa sabi'ina women amana billahi etc those who believe those who believe in what is revealed to Muhammad and those who they are Jews and those who they are nasara by the way the word nasara, the word the Christian never appear in the Quran never never this is a lie the word there is nasara nasara is a Christian cult it's a cult like Jehovah's Witnesses so Muhammad never know what Christianity is about. This is why Muhammad the Quran, when he speak about the, the Trinity, he called the Trinity wrong. Muhammad in the Quran, the God of Muhammad supposedly, Allah Akka Muhammad, believed that the Trinity of the Christians is Mary, Jesus, and God, which is false. And here you see Muhammad promising that all the Christians, all the Jews, and even the Sabians, but who is the Sabians? The Sabians are fires and stars worshippers how stars worshippers they will go to heaven but because muhammad when he sit with the sabian he say he's a sabian actually there's a hadith where a woman she said to the muslims so are you the follower of the sabian they said yes they did not say no so he was called sabian because he followed the sabians and who is the sabians those people are worshiping you know they have their own religion and have nothing to do with Christianity or anything so uh, how they will go to heaven this verse promising them to go to heaven why because Muhammad at that time as any scam he just want customers when you are a scam you want what you want just customers doesn't matter who's the customers so Muhammad he promised everybody I believe in me if you are a Jew no problem stay a Jew you will go to heaven yeah, stay Christian no problem you will go to heaven you are Sabian you, you go to heaven so everybody will go to heaven hey, we just told you who is a Sabian I mean what's wrong we just said the Sabians they are people who worship Sabian was one of the biggest religion in the Middle East this is why the Sabian and look here the irony is for those who do not have too much knowledge the Sabians they hate the Jews to death the Sabians they hate the Jews to death why because the Sabian they believe that the Pharaoh he himself was a Sabian the Sabian they are the one who built the the, the moon god temple al, al maqqa in, uh, in in Yemen and al maqqa is where the name Mecca is coming from so the Sabians they were very popular all the way from the north of Iraq which where Abraham is coming from which means Abraham he is born of a Sabian family and then Abraham he reject their belief 
the Sabian uh, 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 belief is spread all the way in Syria, all the way in Israel, all the way uh, uh, to Egypt, all the way to the Arabian Peninsula, all the way to Yemen. So they are very huge all the way to Africa. So Muhammad, he wanted those people to accept him. So he promised the Sabian to go to heaven. But as we said, there are people who build uh, temples for moon god, uh, sun god, uh, 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 they worship stars. They have uh, uh, very fiction belief. So how those can go to heaven? No Muslim can answer that. No Muslim can answer that. Not only that, the Sabian they don't believe in Abraham. They don't believe in the Jews, and they hate the Jews. They hate Musas. How the one who is an enemy to Musas he will go to heaven? Muslim they claim that Musa is a Muslim. And Allah, He saved Musa. He made him across the sea, and which is a story copy from the Bible. The Sabi and they hate Musa for the same reason, because the Sabi and they believe that the God of Musa killed this, the killed the Pharaoh uh, uh, army, which is a Sabi and army. Did you understand? So how we can make the enemies in one category, and all of them they will go to heaven? Those people they hate the God of those people. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying. Those people, they hate the God of those people, which means they hate the God of those people too. So how the Sabian who hate the God of the Jews and hate the God of the Christians, they will go with the Christians and the Jews to the same heaven of the same God. This is why we say, Islam is a collection of stupid ideas. Muhammad cannot be a prophet of God. He fabricated stories and he contradict himself. The enemies are now going to have lunch together in the heaven of Muhammad and they will have sex and they will share sex with women there. So this is the fake prophet who everybody and then Muhammad he come with a, 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 a additional to that you see Muhammad he come with the stories nobody heard of before as an example the Jews because they break the Sabbath Allah he made them pigs and monkeys have you ever heard of such a stupid thing Allah he curse you and make you a pig for breaking the Sabbath, but Allah will not make you a pig for raping a woman, for raping a child, for killing, for kidnapping, for torturing. I mean, how many crimes in this earth there is? And this 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 uh, fair God, He will make you a pig and a, 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 a monkey if you break the Sabbath. Which had again proven that Muhammad, you know, is suffering from mental issue. Additional to that, there's many mistakes. Like as an example, uh, 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 Muhammad he think that Musa was exist in the time at the time of the summary. Look at this. What kind, what kind of a Quran, what kind of God? He say that the Samari or the Samaritan, Samar, Samar is, I don't know what the, the name of English, let me see what the name will be. The Samaritan, the Samaritan are people exist and Musa, he spoke to them. Do you believe it? There are people who they all exist in the time of Moses, and Moses he spoke to them. <laughs> so obviously, obviously, Muhammad and his God is 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 far away from any from anything real. Historic mistakes, uh, uh, grammatical mistakes, names mistakes. The lineage mistakes. He do not know the name of the father of Moses. He think he is the same, the the, the brother of Miriam, the, the sister. Of, the, uh, she is the sister of Aaron, and she is the mother of Jesus. He think the Samaritan are exist in the time of Moses, and they are talking together. And and I mean, 
it's endless stupid mistakes in this book and this is why we say that everything in the Quran about Moses about Jesus about any name exists in our books it has nothing to do with us Muhammad using such names but he have his own version of it this is why I said in the title Jesus never exists in Islam what they have in Islam is fiction stories and there is no witnesses you see the funny is in Islam if you have a woman she committed adultery or a man you have to bring four witnesses and excuse my language they have to see the penis of the man going in and out not only for witnesses which mean if you go inside the house and you find your wife sitting in the top of somebody and she is wearing her skirt which means they cannot see him doing the business there's no proof because all even if the, he's naked the guy is naked he's underneath of her still they have to see the penis going in and out okay so this is how adultery can be proven in islam which is impossible how a husband he will go to the house and then he found the person in the house having sex with his wives even if he see the penis going in and out still he cannot prove it he have to go and call some people and they come back and they have to st still to see the man doing it and they have to see his penis getting in and out that's impossible i mean the guy will not wait for you so if you find a man in the bed with your wife and you don't see him doing it there is no proof of adultery as simple as that yes this is what the quran is saying this is what muhammad said muhammad he said it clearly he have to see it as the pen go in the inkwell so the witnesses the four witnesses they have to see it as they see the pen in the inkwell you know the old uh, inkwell the like how they write so you, this is how you have to see it not only he have in the bed so it's impossible okay so how you need four witnesses for such a stupid matter but you have no four witnesses for what muhammad said about jesus and moses anything there's no witnesses at all You know what I mean? For something stupid, you need four witnesses. And for something extremely serious, you you know, you do not need witnesses. <laughs> I mean, this is the most this is the most <coughs> in chapter four, verse number fifteen, it says that those who do whatever, etc then you have you have to have on them for witnesses and this is goes for all kind of adultery you have to have for witnesses now in the case of female muhammad he did not mention what he have to see going in and out they are females because here it says such for your women this is about lesbian but it's still it goes for everybody they have to have for witnesses uh, uh let me go to the hadith see if i can find it for you Here we go. Uh, how do you think about the matter of those who two persons bear witnesses to the, to, uh, to the effect that they have seen the sexual organ in her female organ penetrated like etc stick in the etc and then uh, uh, is it they will they will be stoned to death? He asked, what is that? What prevent you from stoning them? They replied, our rule has gone, so we disapprove of killing. And the messenger of Allah called four witnesses, then called four witnesses. Four witnesses. They brought four witnesses who testified that they had seen his sexual organ penetrated in her male, uh, uh, in her female organ, like a pen go in the inkwell, as you see. So you have to bring four witnesses and your wife, she have to do it in the front of the four when they come. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Uh, <clears throat> Four witnesses. 
I mean, who is the stupid? He will wait until you bring the four witnesses. So proving adultery in Islam is I'm not only that by the way Muhammad he uh, order Muslim men before you go to, the, to your house if you are in trouble in a business trouble or doing jihad Don't go to your wife at night. Why? Uh, uh, a Muslim sheikh from Al-Azhar big big sheikh. They ask him what this is for I mean why you have to warn your wife you have to send the messenger to your wife You don't go to the house you sleep somewhere else Why? He said, okay, you want to go, go. What if you go there and you find your wife, she is having sex with somebody? And you cannot prove it because you have to bring four people with you. By the time you go out, you saw the guy in his in the house. By the time you go out to bring four people, the guy, he wear his pants. So the prophet here is helping you. So you send the messenger to your wife. And then she will dress up she will uh, you know if there is somebody in house she will ask him to go her boyfriend so this is this is this is the way you stay happy and look how they explain this madness all right so please if you are going abroad and you are coming and your wife she did not see her for a few days or a few weeks don't go home let me let me see if i can find the hadith for you about this uh <clears throat> I'm trying to find it. Let us see. I mean, it's, uh, the more you learn about Islam, the more you learn scandals and madness. Oh, we can't find this one in English. Let us see. Hold on. <clears throat> I have it in the front of me in Arabic, but we need to find it in English. Um... Let us try a different one. There's many of them, but all of them, they almost say the same. Okay, here we found something else. <clears throat> uh, the message of Allah said, when one of you stays away from his family for a long period of time, let him not to surprise his family by night. <laughs> Look here what he said. The message of Allah forbid that man should come to his family like an expected night visitor, dubbed in their fidelity of spying on their, uh, uh, like on what they are doing. But I believe strongly that Muhammad he did that because he was sleeping with his men wives. He don't want the men to come suddenly. Otherwise, what the what the problem if the man he come to his house he is not excusing her of anything I mean if you come to your house this is your house if you come at night in the middle in the in like you are you want to sleep now you cannot go to your house where do you want to go at that time there's no hotels where you will go you are in town but yet you cannot go to your house obviously Muhammad he don't want to be caught having sex with Zainab if you remember Zainab he went to the house of Zainab which is the, the the wife of his own son and later he forced his son to divorce her so he can have her So Muhammad don't want Zaid and or anyone else Muhammad is sleeping with his wife to come suddenly and he get busted Otherwise, I challenge any Muslim to tell me what the point of this I Mean if I come to my house wh Why I am going to ex why this is not right? Why it's not right to come to your house at night? Your wife, she should be happy to have you. I mean, what's the problem? You know what I mean? So the more you study about this cult, the more you notice how crazy it is. 
It is literally crazy. And here now, I wanna I wanna ask the Muslim Abdul, don't ever go to your house at night. The Prophet he forbade you. Do you see it? The Prophet he forbade you. So now any wife, any Muslim woman, she can bring her boyfriend and she can have the whole night being bong. Because the Prophet, he forbid the, the husband to come at night. Only boyfriend can come at night. Have you ever heard of such a stupid rule? Actually, I should make a short video about this, uh, separated from this one. So guys, do you want me to come back and make a short video about this topic, about the cheating? I was trying to make the video short, by the way. Uh, we made like a couple of videos short. I don't know how many of you watch them. So please go watch them. And maybe, give me maybe... Uh... Guys, are you, are you bored of me? Should I stop today? Should I stop? Honestly, I have a headache. Because after I finished, you know, I was talking to a Muslim guy uh, with his wife. Uh, the wife, she left Islam already. And she convinced her husband to talk to me. The husband is a very nice guy. But he is a very hard cookie. Let us say he is a stubborn, all right? So uh, uh, supposedly he is listening right now. And I'm not making fun of you. I'm just saying what I believe. <laughs> He's very stubborn. I show him the thing. He agree it's a stupid. He agree it is crazy. He agree it's wrong. And then he still he says, I don't know what to say. He don't wanna. He don't wanna say uh, I'm out. You know. Okay, stay stubborn. Let us see how, see for how long. Okay, so I will come back, guys. After maybe uh, now it's eleven thirty. Give me thirty minutes. Is that good? I will make. I will make a new video. I will call it uh, how to cheat. Uh, or what? What we will call the video? Somebody give me a name. It's about this topic about cheating they will make it short so people they can download it easy <clears throat> legal cheating that's a good one legal cheating in Islam all right Legal cheating. So, guys, give me thirty minutes. I will, I will, uh, uh, I will, I will set up that the, the equation. Thirty minutes from now, I will. We will go live on air again. And thank you again for those who support us. And again, by the way, remind remember that uh, David Wood he contacted me today, uh, and he asked me to be his guest tomorrow in his channel. So tomorrow, I'm not sure. Maybe between seven thirty and eight p.m. New York time, Eastern time. I will be in uh, as a guest in his channel so take a note and all of you will come i'm not going to do broadcast here in the same time i will be only in his channel so uh, uh just take a note about that and i will be back in 30 minutes from now and if you like to learn more about the cult of islam feel free to read my books as you see them in the screen you can search them and they are exist in many languages including spanish uh, search them in Amazon, depend on your country location, Amazon.com or France or Germany or Dutch or wherever, and you will find my books there. Thank you very much for being here. May the Lord bless you. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And see you soon again. Bye-bye.